What happens to children after they survive cancer? My vision is to answer this question and uh, to improve survival and quality of life in pediatric oncology. And uh, my mission, therefore, is to define the long-term socioeconomic effects of childhood cancer treatment and to research new therapeutic approaches. As you might remember, I have two main projects going on, one concern concerning uh, social reintegration and the other one about the treatment of neuroblastoma. I would like to start with the comparison of social and economical outcomes between former childhood cancer patients and the general population. One out of 800 adults is a survivor of childhood cancer, but when a child has cancer, the whole family and everyone who loves them has it too. Consequently, pediatric oncology has a huge social importance involving marriages, parenthood, education, and employment. During and based on our preliminary researches and uh, experiences, we believe that former childhood cancer patients have an elevated risk of poor social outcomes compared to the general population. We have conducted a systematic search in October in the three main databases, and during the selection process, we were able to narrow 30,000 articles down to 400. Due to the high number of eligible articles and data, now I would like to present you some preliminary, preliminary results of our work. The foundation of society is family, and the foundation of family is marriage. So now I would like to talk a bit more about the childhood cancer survivors, marital rates and status, more accurately, the never married status. On this forest plot and in the coming ones, we used an odd ratio as the unit of measurement and we compared childhood cancer survivors to an age and social uh, status match control group. When a study takes place on the right side of the line of null effect, it means that the investigated outcome is more common uh, among the survivors. The heterogeneity of, this, of these study populations is rooted in the fact that some articles focus on well-curable diseases with rare long-term side effects, such as non-Hodgkin lymphoma, whilst others underrepresent some of the most hard-to-treat hard tumors, such as those affecting the central nervous system. As you can see, most study populations lie on the right side of the line of null effect and also the summarizing diamond. And this means to us that survivors of childhood cancer have a significantly 1.7 times higher chance of never marrying anyone. This draws attention to the importance of active rehabilitation, which should start right after diagnosis. Finding a job and working is crucial in the reintegration process, and it's the basis of independent living. This is the reason why we have investigated the employment rates among survivors of childhood cancer. On the left side of this plot, you can see those studies where survivors were less likely to be employed compared to the general population. Based on this, we can see that there's a clinically important tendency that survivors are more likely to be unemployed and have hardships in finding a job. This emphasizes the necessity of programs that are based on positive discrimination, which help these survivors to find their place in the active job market. Finally, we have investigated the education levels of survivors. It is known that childhood cancer and its treatment can influence school performance. Therefore, we have investigated the achievement on this slide of the lower and middle level education up until high school, and on the next one, the higher levels of it. Here, we have found that surviving uh, cancer during childhood doesn't mean a disadvantage in reaching the basic and middle levels of education. However, when we investigated uh, the higher levels of education above high school, meaning college degree and university, we have found that there's a mild difference in favor of the control groups, but I would like to point out that this is not a significant and big difference, and survivors of childhood cancer 
can almost reach the normal rates of high school degrees and getting them. Uh, and this can be co um, because of the fact that when a child survives the whole cancer experience, it kind of makes them stronger and armors them with a new skill set. And after that, they can lead a more goal-oriented and conscious life. We are planning to investigate further detailed outcomes. Most of, them, uh, most of those are presented in this slide. Moreover, the heterogeneity of our uh, populations drew our focus to the possibility of subgroup analysis, which we will perform based on tumor type and applied therapies. This will be the first complex and comprehensive meta-analysis, which investigates the complete socioeconomic reintegration of survivors of pediatric hematological and oncological malignancies. It has some limitations. For example, most of the collected data are based on questionnaires. The scientific and practical uh, application of our work is that it creates an opportunity to develop, develop a theoretical and practical methodology for the reintegration of cancer survivors. May I conclude that we can and we should establish in pediatric oncology care a disease-specific, nationally and culturally considered complex and comprehensive protocol for a lifelong follow-up survivorship care. The importance of this task reaches beyond national competencies, therefore this should be performed as a WHO initiative. And lastly, the most important thing, that if we create such a program, then we must use it. Now I would like to talk briefly a bit more about my second project, which is the treatments of neuroblastoma. Neuroblastoma is the most common extracranial solid tumor in children. The success of therapy is determined by the staging and grading of this tumor. As you can see, the real problem is the low um, survival rate of the high-risk cases. Therefore, in our study, we would like to assess all available therapeutic modalities and compare them uh, in regards of effectiveness and severity and frequency of uh, uh, adverse events. And we believe that there is an existing therapy which is superior in the above mentioned criteria comparing to the others, compared to the others. So as I've mentioned in my mission, we are now on the path of defining long-term socioeconomic consequences of cancer treatment in childhood and we are researching new therapeutic approaches in neuroblastoma. I would like to thank you for your attention with a quote from Dylan Thomas Poen, which says, do not go gentle into that good night, rage, rage against the dying of the light. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to your questions. I think it was something we all presumed that it exists but now we have evidence on it, so that makes a, a lot of a difference. And I'm really interested on in what do you think will be the key elements on this complex rehabilitation? I think uh, it will depend on, uh, on um, in our case, on the subgroup analysis, because we can find key elements that which uh, groups uh, are affected the most in which uh, areas, for example, those with, uh, this is known, that who has a central nervous system tumor or receive um, central nervous irradiation, can, uh, their IQ qualities can be lowered than they have hardships in school. So therefore, this, uh, uh, there will be another presentation about targeted medicine and personalized. This should be also personalized by the social workers and the supporting teams that we have to address what hardships they can endure, and we have to find the best possible way for each and every patient. I would like to ask you that do you have data on that, like on average, uh, how old the people were that were asked, I mean, regarding the um, marriage 
status. It can be uh, a confusing factor that if you ask uh, 20 old years, years old pe people, then maybe they are not married yet, but they will be, and things like that. So did you consider it? Yes, of course. And uh, I can tell you that now the included studies age range, and meaning when they filled out the questionnaires or answered the questions, is uh, between, most of them between 23 and 33 or 35. But the more important thing here, I think that they used age-matched control groups. Therefore, if uh, the marriage rates will change. You have mentioned that you are planning subgroup analysis in connection with um, the therapy these children got. And uh, what are you planning? So what will you investigate? Which kind of therapy? So chemotherapy compared with or uh, investigated the biological therapy or uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation because it, there could be some differences in these uh, modalities. Yes, thank you. Uh, actually, uh, we are using the conventional therapies for the basis of our subgroup analysis. There are the three main uh, weapons there are chemotherapy, surgery, and irradiation. And usually articles use these groupings, therefore I'm sure that we will have these kind of data. I think targeted therapy, we do not have enough time since the application of them to assess such long-term outcomes like employment and education. Um, and uh, Sorry, I had one more thought. The <laughs> Yes, uh, so I, we are comparing those, yes. I just thought that uh, the uh, idea of hematopoietic stem cell transplantation... Oh, sorry, yes, about that, yeah, it uh, came to because, my mind. Because these children have, in the case of the allergen transplantation, they have to stay in the stereo box for a month, maybe, and it has a really great effect on the parents' life and the child lives as well, so maybe it can you can take it somehow into consideration. Yes, this was my other thought. And we have collected also articles uh, about this. We have like, I think, around 20 or 30 eligible ones. And, uh, and we, this will be a further discussion between our group that we will include this or to save it for another project. Thank you very much. And my other question, if we have time, was that I could see that on your plots, the um, and at the comparison, uh, or the, uh, could you please just go back to your plots? So there were really high numbers in the uh, control groups, and you said that it was uh, you, a lot of studies use questionnaires, and I suppose that this one million people didn't complete the questionnaire. So what was, what is this number from? How it came? Actually, I wasn't uh, exact enough because we have decided that three kind of control groups are acceptable for us. One of them is the matched uh, control groups who uh, do fill out the questionnaires or the phone interviews on online forms. And in this case, this will be the second one when the higher numbers of controls are used. These are actually national data of uh, mm -hmm. the given uh, um, pay, uh, control subjects who fulfill the criteria of be, being the same age and uh, mm -hmm. gender and social status uh, matched to the survivors of cancer. And th the third one is uh, the sibling control groups. Mm -hmm.